Hello and welcome back to the Ash and Stone channel. My name is Chris and today I'm going to show you how I went about painting my one page rules geckos. I wanted a more subdued and primordial look to them than the bright amphibian scheme you normally see these guys in. And being from New Zealand I've been inspired by our native dinosaur, the Tuatara. So I'm going to start with an undercoat of Army Painter Skeleton Bone. This is followed with a light coat of Citadel Contrast Skeleton Horde. This is lightly applied on the underside of the model and will form the base for the light underbelly. You could use something like Army Painter Soft Tone for this step. The main thing we're looking for is a bit of colour in the recesses. I make sure to hit the underside of the arms, legs, head, tail and torso and I make sure to cover the hands and feet. Vallejo Russian Uniform World War II is up next and this is applied as a base coat for the gecko's back. This is applied fairly roughly to all of the upper surfaces. It's a nice muted green that would allow the geckos to easily hide in a natural environment. When applying this paint along the border with the lighter underbelly, I aim for a rough, uneven transition. A ragged line will look much more natural and individual than an even one. I put this paint on the top of the thighs, down the shin, and across the top of the toes, and I make sure to do the back of the hand. In this case, the paint was a little thin, so I apply a second coat to get better coverage. Although you don't need perfect coverage, a little unevenness just adds to the natural variation and feel of the model. I don't want the skin to be just that single colour though, so I crack out a little Vallejo Golden Olive, a bright, though still subdued, yellow green. This is spotted randomly across the areas of green, to add variation to the scales and break up that single colour. This is especially important on the tail, which is otherwise a very smooth surface. Vallejo Japanese Uniform World War II is next, and I do the same thing, adding a muted dark yellow to the mix. Again, this is spotted along the green areas to break them up, and add some natural mottling and variation to the scales. To add further variations to the individual models in a unit, you can vary the amount of each of these spots to shift the tone one way or the other, and make each model unique. Once I'm happy with that, I grab some Vallejo Off-White and dry brush the underside of the model. This picks out all of the details and continues to give that messy natural look. I blend the green upper and pale lower sides of the model together with a light dry brush along the transition and I give the upper sides a very light dry brush to pick out the details and high points such as the scales, face and fingers. This is a very light dry brush and should only catch the very edges of the details. We need to tie the right of colours on the geckos back together so I grab some Army Painter Military Shader and give all of the green areas a generous wash. I want to avoid the pale underbelly, but otherwise the wash picks out all the sculpted details and it helps blend the greens, yellows and off-white highlights together. That's the skin done, on to the claws. I used Citadel Contrast Black Templar for this and simply gave the claws on the hands and feet a quick coat. You could use a black paint followed by a black grey highlight but this was quicker. I do crack out the black paint though and use a fine brush to paint those dark soulless eyes. Vallejo Beige Brown is next and it's used to paint all of the areas of wood and I use this as a base colour for the areas that we painted bronze. So I hit the blowpipe, jewellery and plaques and javelins and shield backs if they've got them. The wood areas are then hit with a wash of Army Painter Strong Tone to shade the details. I use Vallejo White to base coat the feathers, and it takes a couple of coats to get good coverage. 
I've chosen to paint these pure white, inspired by the New Zealand white heron, a brilliant white wetland bird. White, white, white. We need to add a bit of shading on the feathers, and I use Citadel Contrast Apothecary white to achieve this. You could base coat using light grey, then highlight white, but this was a bit quicker and easier. I've also used Green Stuff World Colour Shift paints to capture the iridescent green-blue feathers of the Tui and make the character models look that much more special. Grabbing some Vallejo Fire Red, I paint the skin of the crest. This adds a nice bright splash of colour that contrasts well with the green and white to what is otherwise a fairly drab model. Any straps or ties or cords are painted using Vallejo German Camouflage Beige World War II, a nice natural colour for cordage or rawhide. Vallejo Iraqi Sand is used to paint the blowpipe darts, although you may wish to give the flared end a coat of bright red to sell that feathered dart image. For those models with open mouths, I use Vallejo Basic Skin Tone to base coat the inside of the mouth, and that is followed up with a wash of Army Painted Dark Tone to make sure those details stick out. While I've got these other models out, the spear tips are given two coats of Citadel Contrast Black Templar to give them a nice dark flint or obsidian look, and the shield faces are painted. I chose to use Vallejo Wood Grain as it gives a nice natural red brown that is distinctive without being overpowering. It's a very thin paint and it takes a couple of coats to give a decent colour, but it flows into the recesses nicely and it creates its own shading. I'd normally give the model a spray of Tamiya Flat Clear about now, although it seems that the entire country has run out of flat clear spray paint, so I'll have to do it later. The bronze is up next, using Vallejo Bright Bronze and a wash of Army Painter Soft Tone. I also pick out some of the various beads and bits with silver or gold. With that done, the Vallejo Fire Red comes back out and I paint the little recesses in the plaques to give them an enameled or jeweled look and just to break up the solid bronze. Then it's on to basing. I wanted a dead marsh, dark swamp kind of feel to my bases, so I painted them black and I glue on a little fine sand and a couple of patches. This gets fixed down with a little watered down PVA to make sure it's solid. And once that's dry, I hit the entire base with Army Painter Strong Tone. This soaks into the sand nicely, adding its own shading and highlights, and it adds a subtle brown to the remaining black areas. Once that's dry, the static grass goes on. In this case, a mix of Winter 2 and 4mm from War World Scenics, and then I give all of the black and exposed sand areas a couple of coats of Mod Podge Gloss. The rim is painted black, and we are done. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope that this has been useful to you. Let me know how you painted your geckos in the comments below. We'll see you next time. Cheers.